A Ukraine security service, meanwhile, says it successfully foiled a Russian plot to assassinate the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky. For more on this, I'm joined by CNN's Nick Peyton Walsh. He's joining us from Ukraine right now. Nick, what details do we know about this alleged assassination plot? Well, it's clear that the Ukraine security services felt they needed to make this public, but the details they put out there, well, there's not many of them. We know that this is a woman, an informant, who worked in a military surplus store in Ocharki. That's a, a southern city on a peninsula not far from the town of Mykolaiv, uh, where they say she was being asked by presumably Russian interlocutors to find out dates, details, places where President Vladimir Zelensky may have made a visit. Now, now, that didn't, in fact, occur in the previous weeks, and so clearly this plot actually failed. But the fact they've chosen to put the information out there now, and indeed messages apparently between her and her Russian correspondent suggesting uh, that they were asking her to specify the hospital where he may have been, take pictures of it, well, that clearly shows they thought this was a threat. I should point out the context, though. Russia's always been trying to kill Vladimir Zelensky. That's nothing new. Uh, and indeed, uh, Ukraine security services say they've rested about... Some of 29 potential Russian informants over the last few months or so. So a lot of this occurring inside Russia, a certain persistent threat, but this is something different they felt they had to talk about. Wolf? What's the latest on the ground war today, Nick? Yeah, look, I mean, a lot of reporting of intense fighting on the southern and eastern front lines, but also some suggestions from Western officials, as my colleague Jim Shuto has been talking about, that maybe the war may not necessarily have been moving at the pace uh, that Ukraine would have liked. And we've been seeing that ourselves along the front lines, a sense perhaps uh, of some frustration amongst Ukrainian troops. They're not able to move forwards in the way they would like. And a lot of this relates to minefields that we've been seeing uh, placed by the Russians and slowing the Ukrainian advance, making sometimes their advances uh, through D-miners a matter of 10 metres an hour or so. Uh, very complex and tough work, causing gruelling casualties. And this occurs, obviously, with the, the clicking... Uh, the, the at the clicking, at the ticking clock of, uh, of fears of potentially uh, how fast they can move before winter sets in, slowing down uh, their advance generally. So a lot of expectations here, certainly, and not all of them being realised at the pace uh, that many in NATO would like to see Ukraine move. Wolf? Nick, Nick Peyton Walsh reporting from Zaporizhia in Ukraine. Stay safe over there, Nick. Thank you very much. For more on this and other major developments, I'm joined by former NATO Supreme Allied Commander and CNN military analyst, retired General Wesley Clark, and Georgetown University adjunct professor Jill Doherty. She's a former CNN Moscow bureau chief. Jill, how significant is this foiled assassination plot uh, and the silence from Russia on this allegation, at least so far? Well, you know, as Nick said, there have been a number of, of attempts to assassinate Zelensky before, but there really must be something about this. Uh, I was looking at the video of the woman who were, was arrested. She's dressed in civilian clothes. You cannot see her face, but it's unclear. I'd have to say, when I figured um, where her town is, Achakiv, it is east of Odessa, a Russian-speaking area, if that tells us anything, but uh, not much, probably. But I think the significance here is that if Zelensky were to be killed, we all know that he is the best communicator, the person who pulls the Ukrainians together, the person who can speak to the international community. There really is nobody like Zelensky. And so having him uh, out of the picture, eliminated by Russia, really would be a disaster for Ukraine. It certainly would be. General Clark, how do you assess the threat to Zelensky in this assassination attempt and the informant's efforts to spy on Ukrainian military sites? Look, this is an active intelligence environment. There are Russian agents everywhere in Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainian SBU, their intelligence, counterintelligence agency, knows this. They're working continuously against it. But uh, this, uh, these agents uh, really come in sort of three flavors. There's the active agent, the backup agent, and the sleeper agent that you don't know anything about. And, and uh, so these sleepers get activated when you take off the top level. So uh, they're, they're three deep, at least, in every position in Ukraine, in all the communities, in all the agencies. There's someone there. 
and they are very actively going against them. They've eliminated a lot of these people so far, uh, but the work's not done. So it's a it's a real problem, Wolf. It certainly, they is. know it. It certainly is. You know, Jill, Ukraine is increasingly bringing the fight to Russia, attacking Russian ships, for example, in the Black Sea and bridges near occupied Crimea. How does this shift in the war play in Russia? It's a little hard to tell exactly, obviously, what Russian citizens are thinking, but you'd have to say the places that they've hit with the drones, especially Moscow, that would really could terrify some Russians who would feel that in the capital with President Putin right down the road, uh, things would be stable and safe, but they aren't. And then the other part of this is the more military attacks which are now taking place on the bridge into Crimea and a couple of other bridges uh, most recently. So I think, you know, civilians generally are probably shocked that this is happening and uh, just distraught that the war is coming home to them. And that appears to be exactly what the Ukrainians want to get across. You know, General, uh, the first batch of the very powerful U.S. Abrams tanks have been approved to ship to Ukraine. They should be arriving there relatively soon. What kind of boost could they actually give to Kyiv's counteroffensive right now? It's a good tank, Wolf, but if you run over an anti-tank mine, you're still going to lose the track and the tank's going to be immobilized. Look, when you're going at these minefields, you have to do it like a, like a football play. So you have to isolate the area with smoke and obscuration. You have to have your uh, artillery there. You have to have your mo uh, radar there to detect enemy artillery. And before you start moving, all that has to be synchronized and set. So as soon as you uh, identify the enemy artillery, you bring your own fires on it. And the whole idea is you've got to destroy the enemy artillery so you've got the ability to have time to get through the minefield. Otherwise, the Abrams tank will be like the Leopard.